character does lack a lot of movement speed. Uh, Flame Nina somewhat, but with the character lacks up in speed, it kind of makes up in damage. Yeah, I just... Oh, you going? Sorry. Okay, go ahead and finish. Uh, no, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I'm sorry about that. No, it's <laughs> fine. As you said, the, uh, the Lightning Kick does kill from mid-stage at 85% against midway. It's a, it certainly packs a punch, and it's the primary kill options that a lot of Zelda goes for, but Ketchup certainly has to have that snuffed out. Yeah. The one thing, like I said, right, that you can have more of a Zelda is the movement, right? And that's one thing that Bowser Jr. does have. There's a cross-up. I like the fact that Ketchup checks to see how clever damage is going to go out of shield. Right? Mm -hmm. Perhaps one weird quirk of this matchup is that uh, Mecha Koopa is slightly slowed down by the Phantom, whether it's half charged or fully charged. Have to just slow its pace to walk through that, and Ketchup might just want to vary his timing with the Mecha Koopas if he sees the Phantom active. Slick okay, Quick Nair will get him on top of the platform. He goes in for the side he's able to try to cross him on to the back air. Charge the knight, he's looking for that landing too. That's kind of like the one thing that we, like I said earlier, like, having that ability to move around Zelda is definitely going to help you avoid any combo batter. We don't see a lot of neighbors love because it does not like the Mecha Kuba. But I like the fact that he takes the time to set himself up with a parry and then follow up against Catcher running up there. Excellent catch off the jump there. Hubbardan a bit too hasty with the, perhaps the jump, burning that when he didn't have to. And uses the up special, that cart hitbox is going to work out. Nice. Setting himself up a little bit. For those of you guys who are wondering, also, too, if you grab the neck, uh, it resets the timer. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it used to be where, or I think it's Bowser Jr. I can't remember exactly, but like, it used to be where, like, oh yeah, the timer sticks the same, but no, the Bowser Jr. never lived the timer resets. And this is perhaps the situation, oh, that. That was good. I mean, he went for up B because, like, it covered that ledge option. If you try to go for a high recovery, right, he would have been there with Bowser. But Jr. didn't have to take care of it, but either way, they kind of paid off in the end. Yeah, just misjudged the recovery there. Perhaps one advantage to Zelda's thinner hitboxes in this particular matchup. I know in Smash 4, if um, and a sneak, a sort of a sneak buff that Bowser Jr. got across games is that if a mat, if a move collided with both the Koopaling hitbox and the Kart hitbox, it counted as the Koopaling hitbox yeah. in Smash 4, which accounted for more damage and knockback. And in this case, if it hits both hitboxes, it counts as the Kart hitbox. So that'll be a damage reduction as well as a knockback buff. Yeah, that is true. Koopaling is actually way more susceptible out of the cart than the cart before it's smashed. That's kind of, I feel like it kind of caught the uh, no cover down, like just running in the motion, and then unfortunately he was there. Mm -hmm. With a character used to perhaps thinner hitboxes that are, is more likely to just, in general, do more damage but only make contact with one of the two hitboxes to begin with, that might just not be as much of an issue in this particular matchup. Mm -hmm. Nice, also that low recovery. Or smash from Clubber Dan, almost gonna do him off stage, but be careful in the face of it. Oh, you said it to yourself, and yes, be careful in the face, and definitely in the face of the knight too as well, because like I said, right, the knight's gonna be like being kind of fierce sometimes because of the setups Zelda has. Zelda definitely like like a faux pressure you into feeling like, okay, I'm good, but you have reality, you have to respect the knight too as well. Certainly, that phantom just puts so much fear and panic into the faces of the opponents, especially when you do have that legend vulnerability running out, as Ketchup did just there. Uses the neighbor's love to reflect the cannonball one of the first times we've seen that. Neighbor's love is decent in damage too, but it's also counts for the uh, reflector. Mm -hmm. I like that Ketchup sets himself there at the ledge to go for that up beast, simply because the, the actual cart will go down if Clover Down tries to go for low recovery and Ketchup is still in the air trying to see if he's going to go for a high recovery. So it kind of comes with like two options in one. As you said, Ketchup uses that up smash to his advantage. It scoops from perhaps a deceptively deceptively large hitbox, mm -hmm. perhaps much more than the animation might suggest, and Clover Dan is going to fall down again. Yeah, pretty close. I'm not going to lie, he kind of had like Ketchup in the middle of the room for his money. Right. And then Ketchup kind of switched things over to his side. Mm -hmm. So on to game two, Clubber Dan not going to switch characters. I know he has a pocket peach, but I, I just don't think that character is anywhere near as prepared. And 
as used as used as his Zelda is. Yeah. If I were you, man, you're probably going for main stage. I want to make sure my main is tidied up for mm -hmm. sure. It's not secondary stage after all. Yeah. I think well said. Well, that side knee there. Pretty difficult to tag sometimes. And the forward smash has a lingering hitbox. It's able to clank it with Zelda. Waits out the Nehru's love and gets the rapid jab to add on a bit more shield pressure. Whiffs with that F tilt. Yeah, the range on rapid jab is a little bit interesting too. Can kind of have to uh, come for the fact that like it will push the shield, uh, get shield push back, and you can actually spot dodge. So. Second lightning pick after the first dwindle of the shield to about halfway, but that oh. up air is going to take him off the top. That was good to see the fact that like Ketchup does go for that high recovery with side beam. Okay, I am left in question to how the fact that the knight actually did not hit catch up. <laughs> he was caught in the jab animation here. That I'm, was something interesting. I'm sort of questioning that too. The Phantom just bypassed him. He just like I don't I don't know if that was X or the Y axis. I don't even know if that's a factor. But man, catch up definitely got a free like yo man. There's a no night zone, and I was apparently standing in the right place at the right time. Go. This is a solid combo here. Percent goes to the up air springs, puts in clever down onto the ledge. Great spot dodge because he wanted to keep the pressure on and probably go for a grab to throw him off. Puts the Neku Koop in the other direction and Club did have to jump so Ketchup knew he was safe to recover low but not going to be safe from that lightning kick. Yeah. Nice, he tries to go for, he doesn't go for the burnout there, he just goes for the classic side knee. You have to watch yourself there because I mentioned earlier, right, Zelda's up, up air. He's got some range in the sweet spot too. This is really the first time we've seen Clubber Dan play with a percent lead and a stock lead in this particular oh, case. That was good. He went for the side and he went for the burnout simply because like he thought that Burnout was going to be at the ledge and that burnout would have killed him. 84% here to catch up Sneed up against Clubber Dan's precious stock. Gets the reversal out of the cart and all of a sudden catch up looking a lot better. He good missed the sweet spot. He did. Up special out of shield going to take him into triple digits but catch up can make this back as in the past. Yeah. Put back out of shield there, trying to see if he was going to get crossed up. He was never really ready for that. He's going to force Ketchup to go low because he's kind of conditioned there to not go for that high recovery. Clover Dan has been covering that every single time. Yeah, Clover Dan just caught onto his movement there with the clown card. As he's returning, just likes to delay it and then zoom in, but that time he timed it to perfection. Didn't release the forward smash too early to the point where Ketchup could recover high and get a back punish, but that time he just did it to perfection. A little bit of stage option choices here. I feel like Ketchup's kind of getting himself a little bit mentally prepared. Mm -hmm. Not only that, looking at what what the faults were in that last game, he did kind of like get out of the ledge a little bit too early. Should have probably waited for a second there. I mean, it, it's it's difficult because the Phantom and a lot of the on-stage options, the projectiles that Zelda has, they do sort of encourage quick get-ups. But if you see those timing mix-ups come in from Clubber Dan, you can adjust accordingly. Yeah. Not only that, I would have loved to have seen Ketchup go for a Mecha Kuba right on the ledge, trying to force Clubber Dan on the shield, just back down a little bit, kind of giving him some time to come back. This time Ludwig is already in a bit of pressure, but does land with an air and gets him into the rapid job as well. That's going to attack on so much damage. Yeah, good check case. And I like the fact that he parries his own Mecha Kuba in the return to sender, mm -hmm. a re-return to sender is what we call it there. Went for the jab in the wrong direction, but no matter recovers instantly and already has the space control back. Nice. He's kind of using a lot of his movement to get in and out of Zelda's range and then exceedingly move out of there. I feel like that's how he should be playing the matchup. That full jab not going to be the one thing that kills us yet. Threw up the forward smash and didn't wait on the dash attack. Only got the sour spot of back air. That's a cannonball. It, oh, I like it too because the cover I respect it. Like, okay, hold on. Mm -hmm. It's going to fall off at some point and I don't want to be hit by it. Yeah, if he didn't change his momentum with the Nehru's love, that might have actually made contact. Yeah. Oh, that guy barely reaching down throw. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised we didn't see the back throw just for a guarantee, like, stage control there. I think he had the percent memorized and just didn't want to stale it, but 
you're right, we could have just seen him get stage control for free. Mm -hmm. oh, what a sneaky back end. <laughs> that actually hit Clifford down from that one too, because he kind of spaces up for the whip punish. And then he just did not enough for the range that back I was going to... Yeah. yeah, I was fully expecting Clubber Dan to get the kill there, but yeah. nevertheless, it's going to be Ketchup taking first blood. Nice, and we saw a percent here once he gets the throw. A little bit of hit of the magic wand. Puts the mech a bit in the other direction. Has to be careful about it returning, but it's going to explode before he can even get the chance. And now, look at this. He's covering himself with a phantom, perhaps for the first time this match. Like I said, he's using that move that they're trying to get in and out of Zelda's range. Forward smash is a little bit different than back then in Smash 4. He used to have more shield damage too, but not anymore. Yeah, not only that, it, not only the shield damage, but the hit stun as well. Mm -hmm. You can see Clubberdan input at the, ba the back here almost instantly, just as if no attack had come out at all. It's quite the setup there. Nearly caught him with the awkward Mecha Koopa, but... Oh, that was great. Great choice of up smash there, but unfortunately the start up in there was going to be the one that did not come out. Pressure. He needs to be careful. Had no time to shield as well. That might have poked even if he did go for it. Air dodges around the cannonball and the F will put him back off stage. Just the run up, up smash as well, doing it for catch up. He's been playing so much better in this third, third match, uh, third game rather than the first two. This is where he's just been really getting the adaptations down the path. He's been varying his time as well. Oh. That's not from center stage, not quite enough. Back throw, no, not gonna be it. Austin Jr. does kind of move with that weight next to that card. Used the full extent of that projectile with the movement there, but oh. still went too low. Good good choice of up throw, actually, there. Definitely trying to catch him with the aim, that most opponents would definitely be dying away from the lead blast zone because they're used to back throw at that far. Perhaps also just trying to keep the back throw unstale at this point. Mm -hmm. Although with this rage, that rapid jab already tacked on more than 20 or so percent. That's that's it. That is it, man. That was great pressure. There we go with the shield break. Oh no, he fell oh, out. Oh, he fell out. What? Excuse me. What is going on? Although the fourth match as well, Clubberdan has a second shot at life and cannot let it go to waste. I mean, let's put on life alert. Uh, never mind not going to be the two stock he wanted, but a JV2 for catch-up. Just yeah. an unfortunate falling out of the F-Smash with a shield break. That was free and all of a sudden it wasn't. <laughs> Just goes to show, man, sometimes you go for the more guaranteed things and the actual disrespect, especially when it comes down to money on the line. I will be right back. I'm going to take a quick little break and grab myself a bit of a Red Bull. Sure. Uh, we'll